A bell rings above my head, and the door shuts softly behind me. The scent of fresh brewed coffee and miscellaneous baked goods fill my nostrils. How nostalgic. I don't think I like coffee, though, but I'm also not sure if I like it. I forget what I was planning to do then. Maybe I've come for a quick snack? Uh, just like how I can't remember if I like or dislike coffee. I can't remember if I like or dislike croissants or lemon bars. I have to retrace my steps and figure out what I came in here for. That's when my eyes land on him. What a looker! Wait, get a hold of yourself. Sitting at a table by the bookshelf, the extremely handsome man types at a laptop that looks dreadfully old. I'm not really focusing on the outdated technology, though. I'm focusing on his everything else. He pauses to run his fingers through his lavender-dusted hair, brushing most of it out of his eyes. The skin of his rather impressive-looking forearms, sneaking out from under rolled-up sleeves, is sun-kissed and sweet-looking. His entire manner of dress feels odd to me, but I don't know why. Dark purplish colors accented by gold accessories and trim match his hair. But my eyes can't stop. No, that's not right. They refuse to move away from his... His... BOUNTIFUL BOSOMS! The sheer cloth stretched across his chest leaves only a little to the imagination, but that's alright. My imagination is as boundless as he is. The man's gaze rises. I've been staring for longer than socially acceptable, after all. He flashes an inviting smile, taps a few more things on his laptop, and closes the lid, sitting back and taking a sip from his mug. His gaze wanders away, but his smile does not fade. Okay. Okay. Keep it cool. I'll figure out whatever I was doing after I speak to this man. I'll be quick. Really, I will. But maybe I should get a drink first while I'm here. As they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Though I'm not sure if that applies in a cafe where you're supposed to get a drink or snack. Right. Uh, oh, wait. What? I, I can. I can look around. Oh my God! I can. Okay. Is there anything else I can interact with? Hang on. Hang on. I just. I just want to see. Okay. I just want. I just want. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I'm trying to click on everything. You can't see where my cursor is, but things highlight when I'm able to interact with them. So hey. Whoa! Wait. I could just go and sit with him. Not without a drink, anyway. I should order something first. Otherwise, I'll just look like a loser. Right, right, got it, got it. Hey, uh, barista, what's up? I walk up to the barista. They seem kind of bored until they see me, giving me a small wave. Good morning. The sun is shining nice today, isn't it? I totally wish I was at home enjoying the weather, but my shift is almost over. Yeah, yeah, the weather's great. I can't remember what the weather is. I'll just take a coffee with a lot of cream and sugar. The barista gives a nod, punching it into the register. It's an old-timey one, which is mildly fascinating. When it comes time to pay, I pull out my wallet out of my pocket, but it's not there. Surely I have a wallet, right? Trying not to seem frantic, I pat myself down, jamming my hands into every pocket. But I come up empty. <sighs> Sorry. Can you cancel? Guess I left my wallet at home. My face heats up in embarrassment, no matter how hard I will it not to. Moments like these are almost as embarrassing as the ones where my card gets declined. They give me a sympathetic look. Just when they're about to cancel, though, a strong voice carries itself across the cafe. Don't worry. Put it on my tab, will you? Now my face burns for an entirely sort of... For an entirely different sort of embarrassment. My mind races with thinking up an appropriate apology and expression of gratitude. You're always so nice, sir. So the barista calls back, and they run the transaction through. I stand there at the counter dumbly. 
The barista turns away and grabs a coffee cup, adding in plenty of sugar first. In an effort to cool my head off so I can at least pretend to be calm when I meet my coffee savior, I open my mouth. Do you have plans after work then? Or do you want... Or just want to enjoy the sun? The barista pauses, then continues to fill the cup with sugar. Not really. Just don't want to be here. But I did get a new toy for my darling little snake. So I'll set it- You got a pet snake? Plus, he'll be hungry, I bet. And when he gets hungry, he starts eyeing his own tail. Honestly, he acts like I've never fed him in his life. Anyway, here you go. They hand me a mug with a tan-colored coffee. Steam rises from it, and I take it carefully. I've got an inventory? Wait, what? Oh, notepad. A blank notepad found in the inner pocket of my coat. Makes me feel like I absolutely have to take down some notes. Coffee. I prefer my coffee with plenty of cream and sugar. The plain stuff is just too bitter. Huh. Neat. Uh, thanks. Hope you get off soon then, so you can take care of your... pet? Thanks. Me too. They lean in, dropping their voice to a whisper. Subconsciously, I lean in too. By the way, Yona over there is really nice, but he's always alone. I have a journal entry? What? A handsome man who comes to the cafe rather often. His name is Yona, and one of the baristas told me he's often alone. Oh, this is to refer back to, I suppose. I'm not sure if, like, the journal and inventory is going to be uh, important to the story, but eh, it's good to have. Make sure to treat him super nice, okay? I swallow. Thank them for the coffee again and nod. Right. Yona! Stealing myself for the inevitable, I take a deep breath, turn around, and immediately get caught up in how beautiful the man's eyes are. Again. With a wry smile, he beckons me over. I hold fast to my mug. Oh, okay. I... Wait, can I go... Can I go back to the barista? Can I... Wait. Is that something I can do? No! No! <laughs> okay, fine. I'm gonna go back to Yona. Hey, Yona. What's up? I sit down across from him. Uh, thanks for paying. I, I, I'm totally looking at his eyes. Like, yeah, just staring right into his eyes. And immediately blow my first impression. Seriously, how lame can I be? But Yona seems to not mind. Chuckling, he takes a sip of his coffee. No worries. I recognize you by the door. I'm a big fan, you know, so I jumped at an opportunity to help you. Apologies if I've overstepped my boundaries. Wait, you recognized me? Hold on, that brings up a very good question. Who am I? When I walked through the front door of the cafe, I'd forgotten what I had planned to do once I got inside. Which is normal, walking through doors seem to make people forget this sort of stuff all the time. That's why I was intent on retracing my steps, up until Yona met my gaze and I moved it down my list of priorities. I hadn't stopped to realize. I can't remember anything at all. This is going to prove troublesome, isn't it? I'm an amnesiac. Even my name eludes me. Yona seems to know who I am, though. I must be somewhat famous enough. Even though I can't remember what I could be famous for. The man across the table from me sets his mug down, and I notice it's half empty, filled with pure black coffee. Of course. Who wouldn't recognize one of the most famous detectives of all time? You're like a modern-day Sherlock Holmes, something right out of an Agatha Christie book. Sherlock Holmes? Really? You know, considers for a moment. Thoughtful. Actually, a latter assessment might be closer to reality. You're Hercule Poirot in the flesh. I scratch my chin, trying to recall any sort of memory that would make this sound believable to me. Got a new journal entry, what's up with this? The main detective in many of Agatha Christie's stories, his method of solving mysteries are rather conventional and strict, and he is consistently... He consistently says his success rate is due to his little gray cells. Sometimes he refers to himself in third person, and sometimes he refers to himself as another person entirely. I see. Me. A famous detective. For some reason, it's hard to believe. Sensing such disbelief, Yona waves a hand, dismissing both his thoughts and mine. I hope I didn't offend. 
I suppose you probably get compared to fictional detectives often. I know how tiring comparisons like that can be. It's not that, it's just, um... Ooh, ooh. Really? Who do you get compared to, then? Really? Who does someone like you tend to get compared with, if you say such a thing? My guy? It has to be... Adonis! No, no. Well... Might be just that. He certainly looks the part. You now waste no time with answering the question, as if he was prepared for this. His glasses shine, almost menacingly. The Greek god, Adonis. It takes every effort of every fiber of my entire being to not fall right off the chair from internal embarrassment. Can you read mine? Also, I'm gonna read the entry for Adonis. The Greek god of beauty and desire. He was a lover of both Aphrodite, the goddess of love, and Persephone, the queen of the underworld. It was said that he was so exceedingly handsome that Zeus had to step in to solve the dispute between the two women. I see. Is that so? I wouldn't have made the connection at all, really. Yona says nothing, simply smiling. I wonder if he can see through me. Maybe I should move on to the next topic, for my own sake. So if you know who I am, who are you? My, what a broad question to ask. He pushes up his glasses, grinning from ear to ear, like I said some sort of secret joke. I didn't think it was all that out of the ordinary, though. Should I be more specific? That might help. I'm terrible at talking about myself. Also, I think, like, I'll probably go for that voice. Uh, I think, I think Yona sounds more suave than anything, rather than, um, whatever voice it was using before this. Especially when you really don't give me much to go off of. What should I ask him about? Your name is... The barista said your name was Yona. They told you correctly. You can indeed refer to me as Yona. It's honestly such a pretty name. I think it suits you, really. Yona doesn't say anything immediately to that, as if he might be lost in his thoughts. His expression doesn't change, though even when he finally responds. He continues to wear that ever-pleasant smile. Do you think so? Of course. I wouldn't say something like that and not mean it. Trust me. Yona nods and he says nothing further about this. Do you have any other questions? What do you do for a living? I'm a writer. He gestures to the laptop, patting its closed lid gently. Really? What sort of stuff do you write? He considers the follow-up question for a moment or two. Thoughtful. Mainly mystery novels. Sometimes horror novels. I am quite a fan of locked room mysteries, and I tend to specialize in them. At least, they are the most fun for me to figure out. They don't sell well nowadays. Ooh, wait, locked room mystery. The specific subgenre of mystery stories that are called impossible crime mysteries. A crime scene which seems inaccessible from the outside in such a way that, um, well, suicide may be the first thought, and not murder is a key element. Hmm. In general, I mean. They used to be quite popular back in the day, as it were. So compared to your other things, then, and other people's other things, too. My other novels are pretty standard fare, I would say. Is there anything else you would like to ask? Any hobbies? What do you like to do for fun? Fun? Yeah, like hobbies, knitting, golfing, drawing, screwing, me. Please, please tell me that I'm going to be your next hobby. Please tell me that I'm the next thing you're going to do for fun. Yona, please! <laughs> I can't remember for the life of me what I enjoy doing for fun. Maybe Yona telling me about this, about his, will jumpstart part of my memory. Yona considers the possibilities. Thoughtful. I enjoy reading, but that may come from being a novelist. I do enjoy researching all about coffee, however. Coffee? He holds his cup up, as if displaying a sample in an experiment, and considers that, too, with a tilt of his head. Coffee. Tasting. Sampling. Brewing. Mixing. I even frequently travel to coffee bean fields just to take in the scent 
and roast the beans in a specific personal way. Like how some people are all about wine, wine tasting and winemaking. That is how I treat coffee. In fact, someday, I... His words catch in his throat, and he hesitates. It's the first time I've seen him close to nervous since I sat down with him. He shakes his head. Never mind. It isn't important. I want to ask him what he was going to say, but maybe I should focus on something else. Huh, where are you from? Are you from around here? I say the question easily, like I was born to. But, Yona's posture changes ever so slightly. Almost imperceptibly. He sits just a little bit straighter, smiles just a little bit smaller. I think I wasn't supposed to ask something like that. He might have had a bad home life, or maybe all of his family are dead. I think about apologizing, then he finally speaks. No. His tone is cool and even. I am from... Dreams. He says it so seriously that I have no choice but to believe him. I'm not certain you would understand. Is there anything else? Uh, I, I, what do you mean I don't have anything else I want to ask him? What does he mean by dreams? Is he... Is he the man of my dreams? Is that why his bosoms are so poppin'? I think that's it. Also, what? What? Journal entry? Okay. Uh, Yona told me he really enjoys everything there is to do with coffee. He told me he originates from dreams. He works as a mystery and horror novelist. Huh. I think that's it. I don't have any other questions to ask right now. Probably. I made you talk a lot, though. Sorry about that. He waves a hand. Dismissing the thought of it being a bother with a serene smile. And I enjoyed having someone to talk about myself to. It isn't too often that such an opportunity comes up. It's unfortunate, but not too many people talk to me. Really? I'm glad to be able to help then. Is there a reason why you're always alone though? I do a lot of my writing here in this place. I would assume people are generally being considerate and not wanting to bother me. Oh, uh, wait, I'm not bothering him, am I? I worry must be written across my face because he chuckles. Yeah, it's alright. It was I who invited you over for this chat, after all. You didn't encroach upon my work time whatsoever. I am ahead of schedule, at any rate, so I can afford a little... How shall I say this? Goofing off? <laughs> right, goofing off. Is this what goofing off is to him? He must be quite dedicated to his work. I love to hear about your novels. Wait, does that sound too eager? If you'd like to share them with me, of course. I had that last line hastily. Yona places his chin on his palm, leaning on his elbow. Why, of course, I shall tell you about them. But I do think it is better for you to read one of them for yourself. At least one. How many books have you written? He winks. Dozens. It'll take you weeks to get through them all. But I'm sure you have all the time in the world. Unfortunately, I do not have any more time for the day. It's getting rather late, so I should be going now. Yuna says this as he looks at the clock on the wall. The sun's golden rays coat the floor of the cafe. My eyes glance out the window to see the day slip by, slowly but surely. I assumed this moment would never end. In fact, I don't want it to end. Swallowing such shameful thoughts, I turn back to Yona, who wears that soft, soft smile, those eyes that drill right through the very core of my being. I almost, almost forget how to speak. We'll see each other again, right? He gives me a look. It's one that I can't well describe. It almost looks like one of... Hunger. Hunger! I have a feeling we have met for a reason. A classic line straight out of a romance novel. At least it sounds like something that'd be from one. It goes straight through my heart and out the other end, at any rate. Yona doesn't seem to notice, or maybe he does and simply doesn't care. Just how utterly love-struck I've become. We'll be seeing a lot of each other in the next few days. And beyond. 
I did talk a lot about myself today, but I want to get to know you tomorrow. He says tomorrow definitively, as if there is not even a shadow of a doubt that we wouldn't cross paths once more. He definitely looks hungry, like he wants to devour me. My face heats up. Yona takes to his feet. He's already put his laptop away, without me even realizing. So caught up was I in his voice and looks and words. He never stopped smiling. I'll say it again and again. He never stopped smiling. That dreamy smile. Again, it was a pleasure to meet you, detective. I'll see you tomorrow. Sleep well. Leaving me no room to respond, Yuna picks the cup he had been sipping from all day. He drops it off on the countertop, behind which the barista is busy cleaning the espresso machine. Yuna does not look back when he exits the cafe abruptly, leaving me behind. I sigh a quite heavy sigh, burying my face in my hands. Why is it that I feel like I want to be devoured by him? I mean, I wouldn't mind it. That sounds bad. Doesn't it? It sounds... Well... Anyway... I want to take stock of this somewhat strange day. I breathe in... Then out. In... Then out. I feel... Remarkably calm. Even when I realize... I didn't really get anywhere in learning who I was! Well, I did learn I'm a world-famous detective. I suppose that counts for something. A sigh escapes my lips, and my shoulders slump forward in defeat. Burying my face in my hands, I stay like that for a moment. The sun has completely set by now, and the fluorescent lighting overhead flickers once, briefly. The cafe is silent. Besides the barista, I'm the only one that remains. Somehow, though, I get the sense Yona remains too. At least, his presence lingers all around me. I struggle to not think of where he's gone for the night. Does he have a home of his own? I presume so. At least, someone of his caliber must have an expensive roof over his head. I wonder how he decorates. It would be something charming and elegant, just like the man seems to be himself. Does he live on his own? Or does he live with a family he does not want to tell me about? Sighing, I shake my head. I really shouldn't bother with such thoughts for the moment. For the next few moments, I wonder about where I'm supposed to stay. Is my house around here, or am I just visiting? If the latter, then where? I surely can't sleep out here on the street, but it wouldn't make sense for a detective to not have a bed, especially someone as famous as I supposedly am. I think for a few more moments. It feels like the answer is on the tip of my tongue. Am I sleeping with the barista? Come on. Think. The answer to my problem is in my inner coat pocket. I just have a feeling this is completely and utterly true. Okay, fine. Notepad. Why can't I use a notepad? God damn it. Without a moment's delay, I reach inside, finding a thin piece of plastic within. It is labeled the Night Castle Hotel. Flipping it over, it tells me the specific room number the card belongs to. 225. That's right. I do remember staying at an extremely fancy hotel. I have a card now. Did I not have this before? A key card to the Night Castle Hotel, which is next to the cafe. The room number is 225. Is this going to be important? Am I going to do a whole like Phoenix Wright thing later? I'm relieved to know I didn't lose the card. I don't know what I would have done if I had. Maybe just sleep on a couch in the hotel lobby or something. They surely would have called the police on me for loitering, and that wouldn't go well with my superiors, probably. I tuck the card back into my coat's inner pocket. When I stand, my feet have become leaden and heavy. It makes it a little difficult to move. I'll just have to deal with it for now. I take my own cup to the counter, realizing I didn't drink much of it at all, setting it next to Jonas. The barista notices me and winks. My face flushes. I chew on my bottom lip. Giving a small wave of farewell, I hurry out of the cafe, pleased to learn that I do not forget 
what has just happened upon exiting. Hmm. The bell chimes, and cool, fresh air fills my lungs to their capacity. This background looks a little familiar. Such air from outside the cafe is so crisp, it contrasts with the ambient warmth of the inside. Finding a new sense of resolve due to the atmosphere out here, I straighten my back and take a few steps out onto the road. I turn around to survey the front of the cafe and surrounding areas. It has somewhat, it has a somewhat gothic, old-fashioned exterior. Somehow, this feels exactly the type of place I'd o I'd not only want to go to myself, but a place I'd find someone like Yona in. To the left of it is a used bookstore. A lamp glows softly behind frosted glass windows, but the sign reads closed. Beyond the bookstore lies an ice cream parlor. Like the bookstore, the shop appears to be closed its windows shuttered. Spring hasn't come, so there's no way a place like that will be open for the season yet. To the right of the cafe looms a grand hotel. The building is so tall that it pierces the clouds themselves. No matter how far I crane my neck, I can't see the top of it. This must be the Night Castle Hotel, where I'm staying. To the right of the hotel is a fish and game shop. There are displays of wooden fish, deer, and rabbits on the outside and the awning is torn. But it otherwise also appears to be closed. Somehow I feel disappointed. I look back towards the cafe where the barista has come to stand in the window to flip the sign from open to closed. It really must be getting late. Without further ado, I pass through the revolving door of the hotel. I have no problems calling an elevator up to the second floor there doesn't seem to be many people out at the time. Even the front desk was unmanned. Approaching room 225, I swipe the card, and the door beeps softly to allow me entry. Once inside, and after I close the door behind me, I'm overcome with a sudden wave of a fatigue. I don't bother getting changed. I barely have the awareness to take my shoes off before climbing into the bed. My eyes slip closed and I fall into a deep slumber. The bell rings above my head. It's really quite a pleasant sound, soothing. Like yesterday, the scent of freshly ground coffee envelops me. That too is soothing, even if I don't care much for the taste. I force my eyes to scan the entire scene before looking towards the corner for him. I don't want to be disappointed prematurely. The barista manning the counter is different, they don't seem particularly interested in doing work. Instead, they're playing on a handheld video game console. Oh, two customers are present today. A man at his laptop who looks very disgruntled, and a woman reading a book, calm and serene. They might be fun to speak with, but now... Hello, handsome! I allow myself a glance towards the table Yona and I set at the previous day. There Yona sits, beautiful and elegant as ever. He brushes his hair back with his fingers, even though not too much has fallen on his face. Though he has his computer with him, it lays closed and off to the side. Instead, he reads from a book with black cover. I can't see the title from over here. He brings his mug to his lips, sipping peacefully, beautifully. I swallow something thick. A frog caught in my throat. Oh, okay, okay. I thought it was something else entirely. I thought it was something, like, thick and creamy. I want to so badly say that I had a dreamless night, but I can't. I'd even rather say I had a nightmare. But I can't. You see, my dreams were filled with... Yona. Even saying it like this, in my internal monologue, makes me feel like someone entirely and wholly lovestruck. In this dream that seemed to last for hours. Ugh! Should I remember the dream? Sure, why not? I don't know whether I can actually stop myself now that I've already started to remember it. What? It began in my hotel room. At least, I think. It looked like a hotel room, at any rate. 
I was just about to get into bed and rest for the night when a knock came at my door. Even though it was late, I didn't see a reason not to answer it. But I did grumble the entire way to the door. My complaints died on my lips, though, when I saw it was Yona. We didn't speak. Aloud, anyway. Somehow, we knew what the other was thinking. He took me by the hand, leaving me just barely enough time to close and lock the door behind us both. He led me to the bed. There, we embraced one another. I lay down in the bed, arms spread out on either side of myself. He straddled my waist, leaning down. And then, Yona. Whoa! Wait, what? Yona devoured me. He began with my heart, cutting it out with fingers as sharp as a beast's claws. While it was still beating in his hands, he bit into it, blood dripping down his chin. Strands of his bangs fell against the muscle, blood coating the tips of his soft, soft hair. Even after his second and third bite, my heart continued to beat. A bump. A dump. A bump. I watched him slowly eat my heart. I didn't stop him. I don't know how long it took him. Once finished, he leaned down and kissed me on my lips. I tasted my own blood on his tongue. It's really, really embarrassing to admit, but... I wanted to devour him, too. I bared my teeth, and I sank it into his neck, and I drew blood. We consumed each other, piece by piece, kiss by kiss, until there was nothing of either of us left. Hold on! Wait a second! I really shouldn't be remembering this when he's right in front of me! I squeeze my eyes shut and exhale a forced breath! Also, I've got a new journal entry. I'm just gonna... That strange dream. Strange dream. I had a dream where Yona sat in my lap and devoured my heart. Then we ate each other until there was nothing left. We kissed a lot, too. I'm not too certain what to make of it, really. It's probably best not to think about it in public. <laughs> I mean, um, well... Uh, not nothing wrong with like um you know having a little bit of a daydream session in the middle of the cafe in front of the man of your dreams. Oh my god! Yuna suddenly looks up from his book, and a grin blooms on his features. He's peering at me, and he looks really happy to see me. Awkwardly, I give him a small wave. He waves back, gesturing towards the seat across from himself. I nod, holding up a palm to signal for him to please wait for a moment or two. I should get something to drink, but first. Patting my pockets, I pull out my wallet. It was in the hotel room. I had noticed it when I awoke this morning, and I was certain not to forget it a second time. I put the wallet back into my pocket, right next to the key card. Oh. Why, well, it's time to... Whoa, oh my god, there's so much more I can interact with. Oh, oh, there's so much I can interact with now. Oh, bathroom? The store bears a plaque that reads bathroom. I don't have to go right now. And even if I did, the door is locked. Got it. Cat! An avant-garde pic... An avant-garde poster that depicts a cat with fierce eyes set on a golden background. The tail of said cat loops down, partially obscuring the text on the red section of the bottom. It reads, Tournée du Chat Noir, the red area, continues with De Rodolphe Sali. With, as my eyes are scanning over the words, the cat blinks at me. Wait, what? But when I look closer and even reach a hand out to touch it, the poster is nothing more than plain paper. I sigh in relief. It didn't really move after all. Honestly, the way it stares at me is kind of creepy. If I move even slightly, the eyes track me, following me wherever I go. Even if I get further away from it, the cat continues to stare at me. Best to just forget it's even there for now. Okay, uh, Faust. The poster immediately draws my eyes. It would be hard to ignore it, probably. It's entirely black and white. The silhouette of a horned and winged man, if it is indeed a man at all, pops out against the pure white of the moon. He reaches forward, downward. Beneath him is a town or village. 
the spire of a church rises above all the other buildings. At the top of the poster, it reads, Faust. I've never seen this version of the tale, but I've heard of it and I have seen it perform live on stage. The movie itself is basically a cult classic. The fact that a poster of it is plastered on the wall in a small independent cafe is a little concerning. I stare at it for a little while longer before turning away. Out the corner of my eyes, I see the beating of wings. When I turn back, Mephistopheles hasn't moved. A trick of the light, surely. Right, what about the girl? I almost feel bad about bothering her. She's completely absorbed in whatever she's reading. During the few minutes that I observe her, she'll occasionally smile at a tiny... She'll occasionally smile a tiny grin, or giggle softly, or shake her head disapprovingly. She usually ends up shaking her head whenever she's about to turn the page for some reason. Well, enough standing here looking like a creep. She looks nice enough. Anyway, I'm sure she'll be helpful. After approaching her, standing perpendicular to the seat she's in the table, I gently tap the table in an effort to get her attention, but not startle her. The woman peels her eyes off her book, training them on me, almost expectantly. Her expression shifts, though. While she is looking expectantly, waiting for me to say something, her smile has fallen off her face completely. I knew I shouldn't have bothered her. All right, it's too late now. Sorry, am I bothering you? I can leave. She shakes her head, pointing to the chair opposite of where she's seated. Oh, no, 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 that won't do. She now violently snaps her book closed and places it on the table next to her iced coffee. Come now, stand up for what you believe in. Sit down with me now that you've broken my focus. Uh, she is mad, but she attempts to hide it. She is bad at hiding it. Sure, thank you. I smile, unsure if I really should be thanking her and sit down in the designated seat. Her coffee catches my eye. She uses more cream than I do. The poor drink is almost completely white. She reaches for a cup, which isn't that much of a reach at all, and slurps it through a straw, somewhat loudly. I deserve this, I think, as I cringe at the sound. Now, is there something you needed, or did you interrupt me for no good apparent reason? No good apparent reason! I was literally just curious. I am the worst person to be in a cafe where I can interact with things. You don't seem the type to do the latter, though. <laughs> Her laughter is shrill enough. It makes my ears ring. I cringe again. She places a hand on the purple and blue book next to her. I should only ask her two questions maximum, I think. If only for my own sanity. Oh, okay. I'm going to make a save right here. Um, hmm. What is it that you're reading? I suppose the most obvious thing to come to mind would be... What is it that you're reading? The woman purses her lips... Tess overall, one of her hands still rests on the back cover of the book. It's brightly covered, even though I can't see the front cover. I can't read the spine from here either. Vivid blues mixed with pastel purples and off-whites, forming no sort of cohesion at all. The book I was enjoying greatly before you've come to ask me random things was of course my favorite. I've read it many a times. It surprises me each time I go through it, as if I've forgotten what had transpired the previous week. It is none other than Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I have a feeling this is thematic. Like, there are so many, like, there, there are so many, like, um, like, pieces of art in here that are kind of pointing me in the direction that I'm probably not in the real world, or maybe I am, but maybe I've fallen down a rabbit hole. And I'm curious as to where this goes. Like, honestly, this is, this is pretty cool. A pang of recognition strikes my chest. I've heard of it. No, I've also read it. Yes, I've surely read it. I remember reading it. A long, long time ago. But I did read it. The woman's face relaxes, and suddenly, she doesn't seem as twisted. Her smile might even seem a tad genuine this time. Really? Really? What did you make of it? Did you enjoy it? Everyone who reads it enjoys it. That's a fact. Not wanting to ru ruin her newly made good mood. I nod, even if I can't exactly remember if I enjoyed it or not. Yeah, I did. The imagery is incredibly vibrant and clear, isn't it? That was the wrong thing to say. She, for the first time, frowns. Perhaps. Perhaps not. A silence falls between us, 
and I too frown. She's acting just like the characters in the book. Perhaps I should move on. Huh. Well. Hmm. Can you tell me about Yona? I steal a sneaky glance at Yona over at the nearby bookcase. Her gaze, somewhat reluctantly, follows mine. Do you know him? What can you tell me about him? She harums. I'm thinking maybe she just doesn't like speaking to people in general. Everyone knows Yona, and Yona knows everyone. He, he He's here all day, every day. All he does is either read or write on his laptop. He doesn't speak to me, and I don't speak to him. She pauses, then, removing her hand from the book, looking down at her palm. So, sometimes, she peers at me from between her spread fingers, closing one eye. I want to speak to him, which is rare for me. I don't ever want to speak to anyone, ever, and that's a fact. But him, I feel drawn towards him. I do, and I don't like it. That's why I usually go home early on days like these. I finish only four chapters before going home instead of the usual eight. I don't want to be in the same room with him for long. Bad news, I think. Bad, bad news. There are certain employees that have quit too because of him, I think. Because of him anyway, and I usually think right. But others love him. Others can't get enough of him. She leans forward and slams her hand on the book cover again. Resist it, and you shall be free. I honestly have no words. For a long few moments, I just stare at her. She seems to be waiting for me to say something. No, Ted. I will take heed. What an odd woman. I think that's all I... The woman smiles at me, and she picks up her book. She didn't even let me finish before turning her attention back to her reading. Caught in the story. Now, I was just about to finish the second chapter for the day, wasn't I? I think I can stay for a full eight chapters today. How delightful. Huh. Okay, what about this dude? The man with the laptop seems troubled, and he doesn't immediately notice my presence when I approach him. I'm wondering if I should even approach him at all right now, actually. As I get closer, I realize he's talking to someone via a fancy, one-ear, hands-free headset as he angrily types into his laptop occasionally. I make to turn away, thinking I ought to come back to him later on. At that moment, he looks up, sees me, and smiles gleefully. Look, I told you, you cannot break building code for something as stupid as this. The contractor already said he can't do it. Yes, by contractor, I mean Roger. Who the hell else would I mean? But, look, hey, listen to me for once. Something came up, so I have to go. But if you call me again, saying you... We'll talk about this later. Bye. The man practically rips a headset from his ear, throwing it carelessly onto the table. When he started smiling at me earlier, I had completely frozen in place. But when he looks back up at me, still smiling, that maniacal smile, I remember I'm a person that can move and interact with other people. I close the distance between the both of us. I don't sit down at his table. I peer across the table, eyes falling on a rather hefty duffel bag. It's somewhat so large, I'm struggling to think about what could possibly be in it. After all, how much stuff is this go guy going to need that he has to bring a duffel bag to a coffee place? You really saved me, pal. That specific client was giving me such a hard time. He kept me trapped for hours on that phone call, ever since I sat down here this morning. Couldn't you have just told him something had come up anyway? He looks guilty, all of a sudden, sheepish. I don't really like lying much, even for small things like that. So it was good you came along. Talking with you here gave me the perfect excuse. So I only have a little bit of time before I have to get back to actual work. The damned idiot kept me from doing really much of anything. As a reward, I'll let you ask me a single question. Make it good one, pal. His smile is crooked, and he's missing a tooth. Is that the crooked man? I can ask him a single question, but honestly, there's at least a dozen I can think of the top of my head I could ask. This guy makes me really curious. Mentally, I narrow my options down to just a few. Sure, I'll take you up on that offer. What is it that you do? Do you know who I am? Have you ever talked to Yona? What's in the bag? 
Oh, this is so good. Oh my god. Well, maybe not. What is it that you do? Do you know who I am? Have you ever talked to Yuna? What's in the bag? Uh, oh, okay. You know what? I I don't... I'm pretty sure we're supposed to ask, have you ever talked to Yona? But I want to know what's in the bag. I want to know what's in the bag. We'll reload this like after we're done with the conversation. Suppose my first question is, what's in the bag? I nod towards it as an indicator of what I'm talking about in particular. The man's smile doesn't change in any way when he follows my gaze, but the air around him does inexplicably grow tenser. He looks back at me. Oh, uh, you know, little this, little that, the essentials, namely. If he was trying not to be suspicious, he's failing spectacularly. Sensing my apprehension, he continues. Someone like you don't gotta worry about it, alright? You can't tell me anything about it at all? He contemplates, then shrugs. There's a video rental store on the street over, and I rent a lot of videos at once. I have to return them later this evening, so I usually carry them. I usually carry them in a big bag. Can carry other things in a bag while I'm at it too. Win-win in my eyes. I stare at him, frowning. He laughs, waving a hand. Come on now, honest. I told you, don't really like lying. You can trust me. He looks at his wristwatch, but I suspect it's more to just stop meeting my line of sight than actually checking the time. Well, that's about all the time I got today. Got it, got it. I'm just gonna load the previous save, and yep. Have you ever talked to Yona? I steal a sneaky glance at Yona over at the nearby bookcase. The man follows my gaze. Do you know him? What do you make of him? That Yona fellow. To tell you the truth, pal, I haven't gotten too many chances to speak with him. Though every time I come in here, he's already in here, and I come crack a dawn. It's got me wondering if he waits outside for the barista to open. Other than that, he normally just keeps to himself. I always see him writing. Usually I can't really come in and dilly-dally with people I ain't know. Too busy, see? But you know it's like a fixture of the cafe. It'd be weird if I showed up one day and he isn't here. Sort of like, dunno. It had me guessing if someone like him was real at all. Interesting. That's sort of specific. I'm a specific kind of guy. He beams at me, proud. I give him an earnest smile. Well, that's about all the time I got today. Yep, yep, got it, got it. Hang on, what's the... Oh my god, there's so many entries. French for the Black Cat. It was thought to be the first cabaret club where patrons would sit and drink while being entertained by the stage. Rodolphe, S Rodolphe Sally, who often funded things like theater and concerts, was the owner. Uh, go, uh, let's see. Faust, a classic story in which Mephistopheles... Attempts to lure God's favorite human, the titual Faust, into ruin. When Mephistopheles says he wishes to serve Faust in life, and Faust must serve him in the afterlife, Faust wants to make a wager with the demon. If he can be shown something that is so transcendent and blissful, it makes him wish to never leave. Then he will lose the wager, instantly dying and going to hell. Mephistopheles accepts the wager. I feel like I want to read this, actually. And... To be honest, I've not actually read the original um, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Children's literature that stands out as an example of literary nonsense. A young girl falls down a rabbit hole, quite literally, and ends up in a strange world of dreams, magic, and fantasy. If only it made a lick of sense. The woman's odd order. Resist it and you shall be free. So said the woman, reading the novel. Speaking in a strange matter, I'm not sure I can trust. She told me about how she wants to speak with Yona, even though she normally hates speaking to anyone. She only reads four chapters instead of eight on days when Yona is there, but that seems to be every day. As for Yona, the customer at the cafe says that Yona is already there before him, despite the customer coming at dawn break. He suggests Yona waits outside for the cafe to open. Huh. I feel like that might be important information to have, actually. I feel like having like all this information on Yona, like... It's probably going to be important, like, for some ending. I'm not entirely sure. So, I think... I think I'm satisfied with my choices for now. The man closes his laptop. Rather gruffly, I might add. It's like the polar opposite of the delicate way Yona did the same action yesterday. Thanks for answering my question. He begins to pack up his things, and when he straightens up, he claps me on the back. He nearly sent me flying. He used so much force and gusto for no... Damn reason. No problem, pal. Thanks for keeping me busy and off the phone. 
Hopefully I'll see you around sometime. I'll make extra time for you then. That'll be nice. Got a few more questions after all. Right, got a few more answers. See ya. He flicks his wrists and raises his eyebrows in farewell before slinging his bag over his shoulder and hauling it out of the cafe. But I watch him stop just outside the door and pull his cell phone out of his pocket. His expression instantly sours. He answers the phone and begins yelling. I'll look away now and focus on other things, if only to give him privacy. Okay, ooh, books. I can look at the books. Books. Book. Book. There is not a single spot on the bookshelf remaining. It is so completely and utterly stuffed with books. The shelves in the middle row, inward and downwards. I feel as if removing any would cause the entire shelf to break. It's probably best to leave it alone. As for what type of books are on the shelf, I can't really tell. I want to say all of the titles that stretch along the spines are in a language I surely can read, but when I go to focus on any one of them, the words blur together. I try squinting. I try closing one eye. I try leaning closer. But to no avail, no matter what I do, I can't seem to read what the books they are. Maybe I'm just tired. I'll try again another day. Also, I know I misread that. Uh, okay, fish. On the wall next to, to the bookshelf is a framed photo of a fish. No, wait. On second thought, as I get closer, it is a fish. Has it been stuffed? I know the type of fish. I do know it. But I can't think of it right now. Still within the frame, but beneath the fish is a label that says press me. Below that is a bright red shiny button. But, but, but I don't know if this is going to do anything, but without a doubt, I'm going to press the button. Consequences from pressing the button do not even bother to cross my mind. I immediately press the button. I wait with bated breath. A ditty little tune begins to play. And... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a fairly popular song, but I don't know what it is. I want to know, can you help me? The fish begins to sing, clear and bright. I can easily understand all the lyrics. Am I allowed to stay? Fascinating. Suddenly, the head lifts off the frame and it turns his body to stare directly at me. Take me to the river. Drop me in the water. The entire body flattens back against the frame. Its body swells and thins again as if pausing to take a breath. The head lifts off of the frame, and again, it stares directly at me. I feel as if it's talking to me. Take me to the river. Put me in the water. Once more, the fish flattens, and the song comes to an end. I look around, wondering if anyone saw me do this. Though I suppose they would have heard it first. But I wonder if I should press the button again. Without a doubt! Consequences from pressing this button do not even bother crossing my mind. I immediately press the button. I waited with bated breath. Okay. Okay. Uh, it wants me to put it in the river. It's the same dealio. Goddamn. You know, I'm wondering if the, in the full version of the game, like this will actually have a um, song in it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm done touching the fish. I'm done. That's enough. I resist the urge to press the button. I could stand here all day and press it over and over if I'm not careful. Luckily, I'm somewhat careful. I like this fish. It's no ordinary fish, though. It comes to me abruptly. This is a base. A, a boss. And not just any boss. A white boss. In other words, the Moroni Cry uh, Chrysops. On average, they're just over a foot long. They're related to the striped bass, of course. But the striped bass is much, much larger, usually. But the white bass are fighters. Somewhat difficult to catch. They thrive in deep and clear waters. Right. I must like to fish. A taxidermy version exists on my wall at my own home, though it doesn't sing. I'm going to have to get a singing version when I'm done here. What was I doing here? Right, right. There's still a few more things I could do. I can look at a cash register. I can look at a menu. I can check out the um, pastries on display. So let's check out the pastries. A see-through display case with multiple tiers. Inside are various baked goods on immaculate dishes. A row of bear claws. Some plain... Wait, bear claws? Some plain butter cro croissants. An entire tray of brownies with only one brownie missing. 
an assortment of muffins in a few different flavors. There's a few more items too, including a three-tiered miniature chocolate cake. If only I were a sweet person. Even if I enjoy coffee with a lot of sugar, that's more to mask the flavor of coffee itself. Otherwise, the bitter aftertaste is too much for me. Even still, all these fresh-looking desserts are making my mouth water. But look at the barista and how angrily they look at me. I decide not to push my luck. Besides, I can think of someone sweeter. Ugh, who even am I? I never found out. The menu board is proudly displayed on the wall, just behind the counter. It lists basic things that any self-respecting coffee shop and cafe would have. Such as coffee, latte, uh, Americano, cappuccino. Unfortunately, all the prices are obscured by some kind of dirt or debris. Despite being clean in every other area of the store. I would reach up and try to wipe it off, but I can feel the barista's gaze on me. If only they weren't here, I might have been able to see what it really says. Oh well. Right, uh, Cafezia? Cafezia. An espresso machine. Since I've only ever gotten coffee that doesn't contain espresso, I've never seen it being used. I wonder if Yona prefers espresso or plain coffee, or does he like them both for different reasons? I don't really like espresso though, but if I got a shot, would Yona be impressed? Before I can think of ordering a shot of espresso, the barista glares at me. My guy! I'm gonna pay for something soon enough, and your attitude is not helping your situation! Guess I should move away from here for now. Okay, barista! The barista doesn't look up when I approach the counter. I give them a few moments to notice me. It's the polite thing to do. Like, my guy, you were glaring at me two seconds ago. Why are you ignoring me now when I'm approaching the counter? What, what, what in the world? They continue to play their game. You can sort of see their scream from my vantage point. They seem to be playing a platformer, controlling a white-haired man and destroying various undead creatures. I clear my throat, hoping I don't sound too impatient. Their fingers do not stop hitting buttons, but they do look up, and they don't seem too pleased. But I feel kind of bad for interrupting them. I don't! Like, I feel like I should call the manager on this guy! Like, honestly saying, what is he doing? You are not supposed to be playing video games in the middle of your goddamn shift, my guy! What is it? I'd like to order... You sure? The question throws me off so bad, I can't answer right away. Am I sure I want to order something at a cafe? Is that what they're asking? Well, am I sure I want to order? Why do I feel like this is important? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll just take a regular coffee with lots of cream and sugar, please. They roll their eyes, turning back to their game. They pause it, put the handheld to sleep, and stand up. They do not speak the entire rest of the time. They brew the coffee, adding in copious amounts of cream and sugar. They don't even look at me. Unceremoniously, they hand me a mug of piping hot coffee. There'll be 25 dollars for coffee? Excuse me? Excuse me, what are the beans made of? Gold? Are, they, are, are these like truffle coffee? What in the world did you make for me? Sorry? They roll their eyes again, tapping their foot against the floor. 25 25 pay up or leave. $25.25? That much for a single cup of coffee? Maybe it's the sugar and cream. Are they charging extra for basic condiments? Oh well, it's already made, so it'd be a waste to tell them to throw it out. Though I am reluctant to do so, I hand over my credit card. The barista swipes it without a can in the world before handing it back. Oh, so I can clearly see the prices over there! Like, that is a dot right next to the espresso. Six fifty something Like, there's no way in hell my coffee will cost... 25 25 when an espresso costs so little. You are scamming the hell out of my pants and I do not appreciate it. Now I feel extra terrible for Yona having paid for me yesterday. I really have to make it up to him. Ugh. I am never going to order from you ever again, good sir. Screw off. Right. Now for the object of my affection. Yoda looks like he's been expecting me. When I approach his table, I don't see anything. 
waiting for him instead to say something. It's hard not to be excited, but flashes of the dream I had last night appear in my mind every time I blink my eyes. He doesn't look up, chuckling quietly a few moments later. I did offer you the seat with me already, did I not? Oh, yeah, I, I suppose you did. I sit down across from him. He closes the book, setting it off to the side and takes a sip of his coffee. He peers over the rim of his glasses, into my own cup I've set on the table. Seems you put even more sugar in it today. More cream too. Yeah, the barista didn't seem too friendly. They just kept adding more and more. I think they didn't want me to come back to them and to ask for more later. Wow, quite sufficient that one is. Were they? Really? I honestly felt like I wanted to like deck the guy. I failed to see what qualifies as efficient in his eyes. You should try it without so much cream and sugar. You will be thankful you did so. Well, not sure if I can do it black, but maybe I can build up to it. That's the spirit. He smiles, and I feel the urge to try it black next time. Anyway, did you get a good night's sleep after we parted? My face heats up, and my gaze immediately turns away. I sure did. Also, I, um, I'm not sure if like we are approaching the end of the visual novel, so I think I do want to actually check out some of the uh, entries we picked up. Fish decoration. It is more than just any old fish. It's a white boss. Moroni cryosops. The average length of one is about 12.7 inches. They sport silvery white scales and are lightly striped with black. They eat smaller fish, namely threadfin shad. But they also enjoy crustaceans and insects. Also called the sand bass and barfish, the epithet Chrysops is great for golden eye. This is apt because they normally sport golden eyes themselves. Night. Right. Uh, I feel like that might be important information. Hmm. Coffee prices seem to be on the rise. I can't believe a single cup of plain coffee costs twenty-five twenty-five. That is exceedingly criminal. All right. You've got golden eyes. Huh. But. But, I can't say that. Unfortunately, I take too long to answer this simple attempt at small talk, and Yona picks up on it. He frowns, concern written across his face. Oh dear, you must have had a nightmare then. A nightmare, he says. I'm sorry for making you remember such a terrible thing. No, no, you've got it all wrong. I mean, wasn't terrible at all. In fact, like some people, especially... Like, some of you in the audience. Like, y'all really enjoy this. For some reason, I thoroughly enjoyed the fact that you ate my heart. I ate yours. For another reason, I want it to happen again. I take a deep breath, stealing myself, trying to think of what to say. How do I explain this without sounding like a deranged lunatic? After all, who dreams something like that a day after meeting someone? Who fantasizes about being devoured in the first place? My eyes meet his once more, with some level of difficulty. How should I put this? It was something like that. On further thought, it was very nice. Wait, 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 what, wait, what? I, I completely forgot what he said. Wait, wait. Sorry for making you remember such a terrible thing. Okay, uh... On further thought, it was very nice. It was very nice. It was it was incredible. It was it was fantastic. I, I would love to have more dreams like that in the future. On further thought, I had a really nice dream. You were there. I instantly regret saying that, but it's too late. The words have already tumbled out of my mouth. Whatever. I'm thankful. I've at least left out a few <clears throat> details. Yuna tilts his head, my admission giving him pause. And then his cheeks flush, and he smiles a different sort of smile. This makes him seem livelier than ever somehow. He's alive too, just like I am. Bashful, after he's recovered from the initial shock, he looks away, tracing random patterns into the table with a fingertip. Is that so? I'm flattered. You think I've already made such an impression on you? Well, he clears his throat trying to seem a bit more professional. This only makes my face feel even warmer. I feel lightheaded. It really is flattering, I assure you. No wonder you didn't want to tell me at first. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. 
In fact, I think it's entirely natural for humans to have that sort of reaction. So you say, but... I don't think dreaming of eating one another is natural. Something just tells me that. I avert my gaze again, even though he is he still isn't looking my way. Also, new entry about a strange dream. After telling Yona about my dream, he assures me it's a natural reaction. But is it really? Do the desires of human truly run that dark? Are there people out there that think about being cannibalized and return the favor every day of their lives, and they think it's sexy? Maybe I might be one of those people. I mean, considering, like, the number of visual novels we played with that specific theme, like, that oddly specific theme, like, it's, you know, it's quite a number of people, okay? Also, like, if I had a nickel for every time I ended up in a relationship with a cannibalistic lover um, who also wanted me to eat them, I would have three nickels, I think. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened three times. All right. But we can't sit like this in silence forever. I clear my throat. Anyway, how about you? How did you sleep last night? Nicely, I hope. He picks up his mug to sip at its contents again, taking his time. The smile on his face says that he had a very, very nice night. It was pleasant. That's all he ends up saying. Looking over the rim of his glasses again, gazing at me with the same fondness, that same hunger as he did last night. As he did in my dream. It's enough to drive anyone mad. I do feel mad, but he says nothing more, whether it's on his quality of sleep the prior night, or any topic. Hmm. It's almost like he wants me to ask him about it. Then you must have had a nice dream too? Then the dream you had must have been really nice, I presume. Nice doesn't even begin to describe it. You were in my dream, after all. And together... We had a bountiful feast, you and I, and after. I swallow, subconsciously leaning forward in an attempt to hear him easier. Well, you know. He winks, dropping his gaze, but his smile only broadens. It's a knowing sort of smile. Then, we, 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 we both dreamt of each other. Did we? And it seemed to have um, been that sort of dream as well. I'm not really sure what to make of this information. That being said, maybe he's lying? Surely it isn't a coincidence we both dreamt of each other in that manner. Maybe I'm being too obvious. Ah, oh, there's no way he would know. His expression is easy and amicable as he continues to speak, pulling me from my thoughts. You know, this might sound kind of silly, but I really think we are bound to each other. By fate. You might have thought our meeting yesterday was just by chance, and perhaps it is, in the end. But I'd like to think we are bound together by a thread of some sort. A thread? What do you mean? Okay, another journal entry. Jesus, this is getting... Oh, I can actually scroll? Oh, I didn't think that was a thing I could do. In some folklore, it is said that one is bound to their soulmate via a red thread tied either on their finger or around their ankle. Though it is initially tied when they are born or very young, some people cannot normally see the threat unless granted by the matchmaker lunar god, Yue Lao. Huh. Well, uh, no, it's Yu Lao, right? Hmm. In other words, I think... I think we are destined to have met. I think... No. I believe in my entire heart that we might have known one another in a past life. That we're meant to find each other in every life after that first one. Perhaps it was centuries ago, millennia. Yet here you and I are. He sips his coffee, the steam threatening to fog up his glasses. But he puts the cup back down before that can seriously happen. Here we are indeed. Enjoying the atmosphere of a cafe, chatting away about such things. I don't know what to say, but, well, so I don't say anything. Really, all I can do is stare at him, my mouth slightly agape, eyes wide. 
But I have to say something. You really think something like that is true? Do you really think something like fate is true? Can you really believe that? I tried to say it as respectfully as possible. I mean, fate might be real, but it also might not be. There's really no way to prove that there's such a thing as fate, but I... I guess... It's kind of romantic to believe in it. It's impossible for me to read Yona's expression. Interesting way to think about it. Very centrist and neutral. As if you're trying to get the best of both worlds. Alas, it really is difficult to get the best of two things at once. You can only have one or the other. His expression falters slightly. But then he goes back to how he was prior. He smiles. It's difficult to tell what sort of smile that is. Also, like I'm gonna I'm gonna reload this uh because I I think I probably picked wrong. I do want to... I do want to actually, like, please Yona as much as possible. As much as that's a terrible idea, I want Yona to be exceedingly happy. All right. I'd like to think that, too. You know, it does sound silly, but... His expression falters slightly. I hurry on with what I was about to say, so he doesn't jump to conclusions. I'd like to think such a thing, too. He smiles at me again then leans forward, his voice dropping to a whisper. Fate and time are in love, you know. It's quite sweet. Quite admirable. Really? I whisper my words back. Yeah, that's why fate knows what it knows before someone is even born. It knows what will happen to any person, any living being, an infinite amount of time before they are even born let alone physically conceived. So they've made a sort of bargain with one another. He considers, leaning away, his tone returning to a normal volume. After a moment, he seems satisfied and nods. You can think of it that way. I prefer to think of it more as marriage. If not literal, then a marriage of ideals. Ha! <laughs> marriage, is it? I think about the dream from last night again. Yona's hot lips on my skin, his teeth sinking into. Get a hold of yourself! Marriage is one thing, but that wasn't even close to one at all. You're quite the romantic, Yona. His smile returns shy, somewhat coy. I try to love as much as my body will allow. So sometimes, it seems my body doesn't allow that much love, and I feel about to burst at the seams. If I had someone to love, and they loved me back. He stalls, kicking his feet under the table, demure, embarrassed. I think it would be a lot easier for me, to be honest. He makes an interesting point, and I think I could fall in love with him. I think I could try, at any rate. Before any consequences cross my mind, I bled something out, my mouth working faster than my mind. Yuna, I'd like to ask you something. His attention, though it had already been on me a little bit, snaps to me immediately. He looks at me with questions in his eyes, but he otherwise says nothing, waiting for me to speak. I... Hold on, what am I doing? My mind finally catches up with me, and I suddenly feel extremely nervous. But I look at Yona. I really look at him, and I feel... I feel... Insatiated. I want to devour Yona whole. I want to make him part of me, and I want him to do th the same for me. I rub the back of my neck, sheepish. It's still embarrassing, so I glance away. Yona, I... I'm staying at the hotel next door. Do you want to come so that we can see if I can... love you? This seems to catch him off guard. His posture stiffens, and he lowers both hands on the table. His gaze falls, too. He stays silent for a few moments, then looks back up, and I manage to catch his eyes. Yona smiles at me, so kindly, so wanting. Yes, why don't we? He abruptly stands up. He holds a hand out for me to take. Again, I just don't think. I immediately take his outstretched hand. I am way too down bad to, like, see all the red flags. Well, he actually accepted. I didn't think he would. He laces his fingers with mine. His hand is just as warm as I imagined it to be. 
I look down at our interlocked hands and butterflies, their wings violently fluttering within, fill my stomach and chest. I can feel and hear my heartbeat in my ear. Yuna squeezes my hand, and I squeeze hers. The other occupants of the building don't matter to me, or to him anymore, for we are the only ones that truly exist in this moment. Ayo! Hey, we leave our half-drunken cups on the table, and Yona leaves behind all of his belongings, and we depart the cafe. The pair of us go through the revolving door, and into the hotel lobby, and up the elevator, holding on to one another like our lives depended on it. As the elevators take its short trip, Yona turns to me, placing a hand on my cheek. He gazes into my eyes. A flame burns within him, hot and bright, and I can feel it. This must be his love. His boundless love that I'm meant to receive. There's no one else on this elevator with us, but even if there was, I wouldn't care. Leaning forward, I close the distance between us, my lips seeking his. He eagerly returns the gesture, sighing into my mouth. Detective? His voice carries some semblance of a warning tone. If playful, he puts his hand on my shoulders and gently pushes me away. When we part, both of us reluctant to do so, even by a few inches, he's smiling, his face flushed. I want to make him mine. Why don't we wait until we're more... private? I want him to make me his. You're right. Sorry. Got carried away. It's alright. I'm eager myself, you know. It's then that the elevator dings, and the doors slide open. The hallway that waits in front of us is dimly lit. I take his hand again, leading him to my room, 225. I swipe the keycard, and the door opens for me without any fanfare. The next few moments blur together. One moment, we haven't even crossed the threshold into my room. The next, we're tumbling into bed, kicking off shoes and socks haphazardly. Unlike my dreams, he is the one that lies in the bed, and I am the one that climbs on top of him. Yona peers up at me with eager, lustful, hungry eyes, and I can only assume I look down at him with the same exact expression. Leaning down, I bite into his neck, eliciting both a moan from his lips and a small amount of blood. The blood drips down onto the pure, white, stiff sheets of the hotel room bed. Detective. Devour. My love. I say nothing. I bite, and I gnaw, and I tear, and I swallow. I consume Yona's love in a flurry of crimson blood and white bone. I don't stop until nothing, not even myself, is left. No freaking way that's the way it ends. No way. Oh, wait. Wait? What do you mean, wait? This isn't right. I have to get a hold of myself. Something is telling me this is very, very wrong. My head hurts. Yuna sits in front of me, still waiting for me to ask my question. Ever patient. I swallow a mouthful off. No, it isn't blood. It's just saliva. The headache blossoms strongest at the base of my skull. Intensity of pain slowly inching its way up in order to coat the back of my head. Also, I got a new journal entry. Maladaptive daydreaming. I have to get a hold of myself. I have to get a hold of myself. Don't think about those things. Don't think. Don't think. Don't give in to them. Don't give in to him. I don't mean to, but I end up wincing. My hands clam up. Sweat trickles down my back. Yona watches me carefully, curiously. I swallow again. I only taste coffee-flavored saliva, slick at the back of my throat. It mingles with the taste of iron, unpleasantly. Sorry. My throat feels hoarse. What were we talking about again? Yona frowns, worry written across his face. He reaches a hand out to touch my arm. The gesture is gentle, his fingers warm. I pull my arm away, putting my head in my hands. 
where Yona touched me just then. The skin feels bent all the way down to the bone. But when I look, nothing has changed. It's still my normal skin and hair and bone completely untouched within. Yona hesitates, then pulls his hand away, resting it in front of him again. Are you alright, detective? I feel as if I may vomit when he calls me that. When he says it in that tone, I don't want to remember. I don't want to think. Sweat runs down my face. I stand up, the chair scratching the floor in such a way that it makes even Yona wince. Um, fine. Panic attack? Okay. A burst of fear so intense and so strong that comes on so quickly that it manifests physical symptoms. Such symptoms include, but are not limited to, shortness of breath, dizziness, chest pain, confusion, and the feeling of impending doom and destruction. I'm most assuredly not fine whatsoever, but that is why I have to go anywhere else. I can't be near him. I can't be near Yona. He will ruin me. Yona says something to me, something that I can't understand. I'm simply not passing it, but he's definitely speaking to me. For the briefest of moments, he looks irritated, his brows furrowed and angled down, his glasses shining through to obscure his actual eyes. That frightens me. I don't know why. I do not say anything further to him. I turn away from the table, approaching the counter. The barista does not look up. I don't care though. That's fine. I just need to be away from him. I can't look at him. The sounds of movements come from behind me. I stiffen, pretending to be extremely interested in the display case of the counter. My breathing quickens. I feel him approaching. The darkness begins to close in around me. I cannot breathe, as the headache has spread to every inch of my head, leaving no part spared. The pain is overwhelming. My chest tightens, too. An invisible hand squeezing my lungs and heart. My stomach fills with molten lead. I close my eyes. The bell above the front door to the cafe chimes. The atmosphere instantly feels lighter. I don't dare check quite yet. Only when I see his shadow pass over the barista's uncaring face, over the pristine counter, over the pastries in the display. Only when the shadow is gone does it get easier to breathe again. The barista gives me a look. For once, they appear sympathetic, which is different from their usual apathy. They nod. My shoulders slump. I bury my face in my hands, wiping away wetness I don't know the origin of. When I pull them away, my palms appear bright red. I choke down a scream, squeezing my eyes shut. Tentatively, I open one, then the other, finding my hands are entirely clean. I force air into my lungs, filling my chest, then force it out. When I turn back around, and I do this with quite a bit of effort, Yona is gone. I swallow, and I taste just saliva. Yeah. Shuffling along to my seat, I fall into the chair, slumping forward, until my forehead presses against the cool surface of the table. My hands grip the back of my head. I take comfort in the slight pressure. And then, I calm myself down. I don't do anything special. I don't think. I stare at the grain of the table, and I begin to count the lines that I can see. When I run out of grain in the direct line of sight, I start again. Usually I don't freak out like that. I've never felt so intensely. I don't know what came over me. I... I don't know. I don't know anything. Even though I wanted him gone, Yona must hold the key to who... Yona must hold the key to who I am. If only I can find out who Yona really is. Then, just maybe, I'll understand everything. I close my eyes, my breathing having returned to normal. So, I have a headache still. I feel fine otherwise, so my head raises of its own accord. I stand up, do a few stretches. Everything is truly so surreal. But I have to find out who I am. Or else. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Since no one has come in and no one 
else has needed anything from behind the bar. The barista remained seated on the stool, their legs propped up on an empty cardboard box. I almost don't want to approach them again, but, well, I figure I might as well get another drink because, well, my throat is parched. I'm so thirsty. I feel like I might die. Maybe that's a little overkill. Maybe it's not. Maybe I will only partially die. I don't know if that's possible or not. Anyway, I just want something to drink. So I'll grin and bear with their terrible bedside manners. Not bedside. That's the wrong word. I meant customer service manners. That sounds not a lick better. And I approach the counter. They predictably do not look up. They continue bashing the buttons on their handheld. They must know I'm here, though, because I swear I saw their eyebrow twitch. Sorry. Excuse me? They don't answer. Hello? Can you hear me? They don't answer. Like to order? It'll only take a moment. They heave an incredibly heavy sigh, like they're breathing out all the air in the entire world. The barista pauses the game and gets to their feet, setting the handheld off to the side. Wordlessly, they stand behind the counter, waiting. Well, what would you recommend? What? You're not getting the same thing? What an indecisive loser. Excuse me? What the hell? I'm, act I'm actually gonna call the manager on you. What, what is your problem, my dude? No, no, I just wanted to branch out. Expand my taste, really. What would you suggest for someone who wants to really get into it? They consider the question. Thoughtful for the first time since I've spoken to them. The heavenly haze. The what? It's on the secret menu. God, you don't know anything, do you? In an effort to not appear like a loser in front of this lively... In front of this likely teenager, I shake my head. I've heard of it. I have. True and honest. I just haven't looked at it lately, so I must have forgotten. I'll take a heavenly haze. Lodge. The barista doesn't say anything else after that. They simply turn around, pulling all sorts of contraptions out of various cabinets. All kinds of ingredients. Goodness, what did I get myself caught up in? As they're setting up... What the hell? Eh, probably fireworks. As they're setting up twisting tubes and what appears to be chemistry blasts, I call to them from behind. One question, could you remind me of the price? Without looking over at me, and also without stopping the setup at the beginning of the brewing process, they reply, 7227, take it or leave it. Outrageous! I expected it to be somewhat more expensive than the price of regular coffee, but this, this, should I take out a loan just for coffee? So I suggest take it since I've already added in some rare, some rare beans and it'll cost you anyway. Oh, no, no, no. Just, I wouldn't dream of turning down a heavenly haze. I do quite enjoy them. This earns a curious pause out of them, but then they continue. Time passes in silence after that. Like, seriously. Like, are you just overcharging me so that you can just futz around and probably, like, get some illicit substances? Is that is that what I'm hearing here? Like, you seem like the sort of guy who would do that, my guy. I'm grateful no other customer comes in or needs something because it takes what seems like forever for the barista fi to finish this single cup of coffee. I wonder if it would have... I wonder if I would have gotten it quicker had I gotten a small instead of a large... When it's done, the barista dutifully puts all the equipment and other items away. Only once the counter is back to normal do they turn to me. They hand me a cup. The liquid inside is still boiling. No, it's not boiling at all, but simply... Bubbling? A puff of smoke erupts from the dark brown liquid, forming a skull that dissipates into the air. Must be a trick of the light. That's all. I just saw normal steam wrong. I'm hesitant to take it, especially for such a large price, but... I don't like to waste any food or drink. Right. I don't like to be wasteful in anything I do. I remember now. I hand over my credit card, feeling the frown I'm wearing become a part of my very essence of being. They take the plastic like I'm not handing over nearly three quarters of a hundred dollars. If Yona comes here so often, you must be rich. Is that it? Yeah, that's... they'll do. Thank you. Seriously, what is wrong with this lad? What is wrong with him? Okay, let's look at the fish again. The wall next to the bookshelf is a frame photo of fish. No, wait. Uh, okay, let's see. I think we've already seen all this, actually. God damn it. Also, I want to make a note to the developers. Um, so 
if you actually take a look at the fish decoration twice, like you get duplicates of the same um of the same journal entry. I don't know why this happens, but like uh yeah, uh just do take note of that. In the meantime, I think the only thing of uh I can just leave the cafe. Huh. I do want to talk to the woman first. The woman is still reading. She's back to looking calm and serene. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, no, no. She's muttering to herself. What an odd presence. I better not bother her anymore. I don't think I'll survive a second round of her passive-aggressive nonsensical wrath. Okay, I guess that's all we can do. Uh, There's not a single spot on the bookshelf remaining, so it is completely... It is so completely and utterly stuffed with books. Okay, we've already seen all this. I guess all we can do now is leave the cafe. All right, let's just leave. It's getting kind of late. The sun is starting to set. The light pouring in from outside the window casts odd shadows onto the floor of the cafe and the people within. Should I go back to rest at a hotel? Yeah. Is there anything I need to check? No, nah, I don't think there's anything else. We've already interacted with everything in the cafe, so yeah, let's leave. I think I've seen and done and spoken to people enough. I'm getting kind of sleepy, as if on cue I stifle a yawn and fail. The sun continues to set, turning its huge eye through the window and onto me, inside. Whoa. Okay. Coffee's removed. Nice. Wait. Hang on. Do I still- I still have my coffee! What are you talking- I, I still have like two coffees with me! Wait, <laughs> what? Oh, there goes my heavenly haze. I return my cups to the counter. The barista doesn't even spare me any acknowledgement. Is my coffee co It's still there! That's fine with me. Alright, let's get on out of here. Before I exit the cafe, I should go over I should go over a few things. Thank goodness I've been taking notes. I pull out the notebook and reread and reread what I've written down. Huh. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think there's anything out of the ordinary. Literally, uh, we've already gone through all this. I feel like I've gotten nowhere, really. I also feel like I've learned a lot today. I'm just one step closer to the truth. I know it. But only one. I feel sick in my stomach, and a huge frown tucks the corner of my mouth down. For some reason, I feel like I'm running out of time. Regardless... I should get some rest. Though I know it's futile. I wave to the barista, who still doesn't look away from their game. And I leave the cafe, the overpriced freaking cafe. I'm pretty sure the last barista wouldn't have overcharged me. <sighs> the bell chimes again, and I take comfort in its presence. I look up and down the street. It seems like the, tree the three shops on either side of the cafe are still closed. Even though I swear it's a little earlier than when I left yesterday. I'm still especially disappointed the fish and game shop keeps its doors shut tight. I was hoping to peruse its wares. I enter the hotel instead, forlorn and take the elevator up to my room. Like the previous night, I don't bother to change, only pulling off my shoes and collapse onto the bed. At least take off your socks, my guy! I stare at the unfamiliar, yet familiar ceiling. This is not my home, but I've been here for long enough. Or have I really been here for long at all? It's difficult to tell. With a sigh, I turn over onto my side, pulling the covers up to my chin. I shut my eyes. Sleep is a little more difficult tonight, but once I fall asleep, I do not wake up. But I do not dream. At least, I don't think I do. So that was Aftertaste Part 1. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, the link to the game will be in the description below. Oh my god, like this was... This has me curious. Like, what exactly is going on? Yona is probably not human or something is probably wrong with me. I don't know what's going on in this game. I don't know what exactly is this mystery which I'm trying to solve. And god, god, I... I do love me a good mystery, Jesus Christ, especially one with, uh, especially one with a potential love interest that hot, like, seriously, oh my god, I just want to eat him up, but anyway, thank you all so much for watching, hope you all have a lovely rest of the day, and as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video, this is Lion, signing off, ciao.